hey, I want to go through my world record speed run of Sweet Home. You know, give some commentary, maybe a little tutorial, tips and tricks, as well as some history about this glitch. So this is called the board glitch, which involves taking a strong board and a weak board and doing a certain amount of steps. So Emmy falls into, into a pit and then the game glitches out. I mean, you'll see in a second how it works. I also will give a little bit of history on it. The board glitch was, to my knowledge anyway, it was discovered by speedrunner named K. Now they currently have the official task, which is I think 40 minutes. It doesn't use the board glitch. But they discovered this glitch, but it wasn't until a speedrunner named Matt Chariot, he figured out how to put that glitch into a speedrun. So I remember seeing his run and it was like, wow, that, this glitch is crazy. And then another speedrunner named Kill Me, yeah, that's his name, he took the glitch even further and discovered some other game-breaking stuff <laughs> that added onto the board glitch. Oh man. And then my run here, I just improved upon that, figured out another solution for something that I call item shuffling, which you'll see in a little bit. Basically, each character has a permanent primary item. Kazuo has lighter, Akiko has the med kit, Emi with the key. But with this item shuffling glitch, things will just switch around and, and it doesn't even have to be one of the other characters primary items it could be anything it could be emmy might have uh the rope in her primary slot or akiko might have the vacuum and kazuo might have the key you know it's, it's just like the way that it happens it seems like it's all rng but there are ways to set it up to where you can mostly get a good item shuffling pattern but yeah we're gonna go through it and i'll explain a little bit on the way <laughs> So for those interested in running this game, I start my timer as soon as I'm able to get control of Kazuo. I'm not sure if there's a faster way to do that section right there, but that's how I do it. Grab that tonic right there. Give it to Akiko. Grab both of these weak woods. Give one to Emmy, give one to Kazuo. You'll always get into an encounter right here. If you get into an encounter with one of these things, just use prey points. If you get into an encounter with the evil doll, just use one of the woods and that'll take them out. Grab the blue strong board Give that to Kazuo. I mean, it doesn't really matter who you give the strong board to because you're going to be placing it down anyway, but I've just always been doing it that way. Now, the tricky thing about this first room right here is that you don't want to get into any other encounters because that's going to waste time. There's been times when I've gotten into three encounters in here. And it's like, damn, <laughs> you really just want to get into that first encounter and then nothing else until the setup of the glitch happens. Because if you get into any more, that's really just, it's kind of just wasting time. I place uh, Kazuo's weak board on the right. Place the strong board on the left. Now these movements are, are really important. You want to take a specific amount of steps. If you take any more or any less, this glitch is not going to work. Emmy disbands from the team, and then she goes and steps on the weak wood once. And then she steps off, and then joins back. Okay. 
this part's really important. So that's one step right there, another step there, and then one more step down. So it should look exactly like this. Emi and Akiko are on the weak wood together. They're both on it at the same time, and Kazuo is above them. And then you want to have Emi disband from the team again. Switch to Kazuo. Have him disband from the team. Now, also here is where you may have to reset if you get into an encounter on the wrong tile. You have to be either right here when an encounter happens, or you have to be right here when an encounter happens. If you're over here, or if you're like over here or something, you have to reset. Luckily, <laughs> I got into an encounter right away right here. Well, the step counter is, is random. Now, without looking at a uh, RAM watch, you're not going to know how many steps you have until the next encounter. So it's completely random. During my runs, I have no clue. So you just have to hope that you get a good step count. So now here, you have to be careful with the worms. They do give status ailments. Here, I just, I just got lucky. The first thing is you want Kazuo to call Emmy. And when you're in control of Emmy, you have Emmy join Kazuo. Luckily, we didn't get a status ailment right there. Next, you want to have Kazuo leave the battle. And then you have Emmy call Akiko. Now right here, you this is what you want to see. If Kazuo isn't able to escape, then on the next turn, you have to make sure he escapes. Because if he doesn't, the glitch is not going to work and you're going to have to reset. Now, right here is important. You are in control of Akiko. You have to have her move down one. And that will break the weak wood. Now, don't join the battle. Just have her wait. <laughs> now, luckily, Kazuo was able to escape. Now, if he didn't escape, you want to do it on this round. Since Kazuo already escaped, you want to have Emmy escape. And if that doesn't work, try it again on the next round. But if she gets a status ailment, then what you could do is you can call Akiko and have her heal Emmy. But again, that wastes a lot of time. It's just better just to reset and try again. Luckily, I was able to have both of them escape. So Emmy is not supposed to be in a battle while being stuck. So that's why this glitch breaks the game. Right now... I'm in control of Emmy, but you can't move her around. So what you have to do is you have to press the join button and Kazuo is going to join Emmy. Now you have to switch to Kazuo and you'll see what happens. <laughs> join up with Akiko and then now look. Emmy is in the floor, but she's but she's in the team. So from here you'll see a lot of crazy stuff happens. Now the next step is to have Taguchi come and rescue Emmy. By having Taguchi rescue Emmy, the game now thinks that Emmy is in two parties at once. The game still thinks that she's in the party with Akiko and Kazuo, but then the game thinks that she's also with Taguchi. So this is really where the game breaks, and with this glitch, you can have Taguchi move Emmy around so she could bypass obstacles such as glass, ropes, and other stuff. And you can also use Taguchi as additional storage, which is really, really important. After you do that, you want to switch to Akiko temporarily. And once you get into this position, then you want to switch to Kazuo. This is a technique that I do. In Matt Chariot's run, he pushed Emmy into the wall and have someone rescue her again, which I think takes up too much time. And then in Kill Me's run, he just walks with Akiko all the way up. Which, which is kind of dangerous because having Akiko in front of the party, weird glitches happen and a lot of unwanted side effects happen. 
You want to stop right there and then switch to Emmy. Switch to Taguchi and then you'll see how he's able to move Emmy to be able to get to the other side. I move up three steps. Now the other speedrunners have their own ways of doing this. This is kind of my method of moving around. I try to take as minimal steps as possible with Taguchi. I've memorized these steps, so I know exactly how many steps to take with Taguchi so Emmy won't get stuck. Leave the team again. And position yourself right in the middle underneath this bridge. I have Taguchi walk all the way down here. Now don't don't go in the door because if you enter a door with Taguchi, he'll bring Emmy with him. And that's actually something you'll have to do later on at near the end of the run. Grab this weapon right here. Um, again, the other runners don't do this, but I position her right here. I take one small step to the right. And that'll move her down here, so then go back up to that position. And take another small step to the right. Switch back to Emmy, and now she's back here. And now from here on out, whenever you get into an encounter, this is one of the major things that's different. In this game, usually when you're playing it regularly without this glitch, you always have first attack. When you see an enemy on the screen, you'll always have the chance to attack them first before they attack you. Now with this glitch, I don't know how to really explain it. <laughs> I'm not that technical, but the enemy will attack you first, which makes makes it a little bit more difficult if you get into an encounter with a, with a stronger enemy. Here, it's not too bad. It, it could have been a lot worse if it was the worms. But now that you have the silver sword, you should have no problem taking that one out. It's important that you have the order of the party, Emi, Akiko, then Kazuo, for this setup. Now take sword from Emi, give it to Kazuo. You have to be really careful because Emmy is now moving at twice the speed because of this glitch. So when you're in a party and you're in control of Emmy, she moves at twice the speed, but Akiko and Kazuo don't. So you can accidentally soft lock the game if they're misaligned from Emmy and they go off the grid. I actually almost messed up later on in the run towards the end where uh, Akiko went off the grid a little bit <laughs> and I had to reload. Luckily I had a save right before that. Now, this run has a lot of saves and resets. Um, the reason for that is because of what I said earlier about the enemies attacking you first because of the glitch. To ensure that you always have first attack, saving and reloading is what you have to do. Now, you could take a chance and hopefully you'll, you'll get rid of the enemy before they uh, give you a status ailment or something crazier happens. There could be unwanted side effects from an enemy attacking first also. Um, like unwanted item shuffling can happen and status ailments for sure. But yeah, um, saving and reloading is is kind of the key to getting around this. And just to, just to clarify about speedrunning this game, it is okay and allowed to save and reset from within the menu. You can you can save in here and also reload, but you can also, if you're on console, reset your console or uh, soft reset on your emulator, but it is not allowed to use save states. Do not use save states or anything like that. Using the in-game save function is allowed. See right here, I almost misaligned myself right here as well. You gotta be real careful. Luckily, I was able to fix that. So here, because there's some glass, switch to Taguchi and have him move up a couple steps to get Emmy past that glass. Also, another weird uh, side effect to this glitch is that um, when you're in this order, Emmy, Akiko, Kazuo, when you switch to another character such as Taguchi, like the music will change. Kind of weird, and I think that's actually important for this setup coming up soon because of the order. It won't work if the order is different. Mm -hmm. 
So from here, I do another save right here. And the most important part of this, of this route is that you have to get into an encounter with the torso zombie. If you get into an encounter with anybody else, you have to reset and try again and hopefully you'll you'll get that enemy. I don't know why, but th that enemy is uh, important for the item shuffling glitch to get the right items that you need to um, get around the mansion and beat the game. So first try, I got the snake skull enemy, um, so I had to reset. I tried doing some different movements there because it is all RNG, so certain movements, and like other RPGs, opening the menu will change RNG, and some things are frame perfect, so where, uh, depending on what frame you move on will trigger a different enemy or whatever. So luckily I got the torso zombie on the second try. Now here's where you could probably, anybody else trying to speed run this, you might be able to save some time here because I didn't get a first try zombie. Another weird thing about the battle system since the board glitch happened is that you'll see multiple Emmys in, in the party during this. So here, you'll see everybody attacks twice. If you do a specific attack on the first time that that character appears, it's like it won't count. So let's say, like, the first time you see Emmy here, if you have her do a prey point, and then the second time she appears, and you have her do, let's say she uses just her regular attack, it'll only register that second time that she appears. So for the first three, just to save time, so for the first three names that pop up here, Emi, Akiko, and Kazuo, just press attack because it doesn't even matter. It's only what happens on the second time their names appear. This is important. You need to have Emi call Asuka. I don't know why, but you, you just have to do it. <laughs> this is actually something that uh, when, I, when I was going through, I was messing around... Um, discovering things in the prototype version of the game. And uh, independently from the speedrunner Kill Me, I've uh, also found like weird item shuffling things happening and uh, and noticed when you called somebody during this uh, order, this party order, the music will change. And when you return to the battle, as you'll see in a second, the music stays the other music, not the battle music. Emmy call Asuka. Now, Akiko, use her med kit. Again, I don't know why, just just do it. <laughs> and Kazuo, you have to use one prey point. Um, I've tested this, and if you use any more than that, you may have different results. Weird things happen. Just, just do one prey point. You'll... You'll hear that now the music changed back, like I was just saying. Um, now, in, in Kill Me's run, he moves Asuka out of this room. For me, I found that it works best if I just don't touch anything. And I just leave Asuka here, don't touch the controller. And, and just wait. Wait until it goes back to the battle. Okay, now you'll see that Akiko uses her med kit, which does nothing, and I think that's on purpose, so Kazuo can deal the final blow. I guess that has something that's that might be important for this. I, again, I don't, I don't know all the technical stuff, but just just follow along. During this sequence is when the item shuffling happens. Now, yeah, everybody's gonna level up multiple multiple times including some random glitched characters you just have to wait this out until it's complete During this whole part is when the item shuffling happens. Now this is all RNG based. There could be at least two different outcomes that I've gotten. 
This item shuffling will allow Kazuo to receive the diary. It'll be in his inventory. The other couple of outcomes that could happen is that Emmy may lose her key and get replaced with the pickaxe, which in Kill Me's run, that's what happened with him. But in my run, Emmy was able to keep her key in her primary slot. <laughs> Okay, from here, it seems that Kazuo completely just dis disappears. Do not ever switch to Kazuo ever again from here on out. If you do, you'll soft lock the game. So from here, go down to the, to the steps. And here's the second part of this setup. So now we, we did the item shuffling with the torso zombie. Now we have to do the door glitch. Now what this is is that it's going to allow us to enter the door up there to the right without needing the gold key. It's just going to open it for us. In order for us to do this, um, again, I don't know exactly the technical setup of it, but by getting into an encounter with these bats, it's going to unlock those doors. It seems that it's all RNG based. The amount of times that you open the menu matters for this. If you open the menu four times and then get into an encounter with the bats, it seems to work. It's not 100%, but it works most of the time. you want to do it again and this time don't open the menu and then you'll see look the gold key door is open Another weird side effect of these glitches is that during this time, you're unable to switch characters. And you're also unable to get into any other encounters. So you can use this to your advantage up until a certain point. And look, as you can see here, Emmy luckily was able to keep her key. <laughs> this is the gem. I don't know why I, uh, Akiko got the gem, but I, it doesn't really matter. Now in Kill Me's run, he was able to keep Kazuo's lighter I was unable to keep it. I seem to only be able to get the log for some reason. I don't know why. But look, right here is this is the diary. He has another log here. And Emmy's weapon slot now has a camera in it. And another camera here. And also Kazuo was able to keep the weapon that we gave him earlier. So right here we can use the tonic to heal everybody up. Because now, remember, we just leveled up a ton of times. So let's get everybody's HP up. Emmy's gonna go solo for a little while. And we're gonna go straight to this area right here. We don't need the pulley. Emmy's already <laughs> running at twice the speed. So we wanna replace that with the blue candle. Yeah, see, this is another area where it's complete RNG. I don't even really know how it works, but I kind of got unlucky here, and this room took a lot of time to get out of here. Place that first candle down so you can have an empty inventory and look at this I'm taking all these steps without getting into any encounters you just have to deal with these um, annoying quick time events and look this door is already open too those encounters with the bats also seem to have opened this door You want to grab this rope. The rope is really important soon, and I'll explain why. Besides getting through this area. Grab 
grab that blue candle. And for those who didn't know, you can bypass this barrier by um, using the rope here, as I just did. Still have to deal with these annoying quick time events. So as you can see right here, you're unable to switch characters. See, Emmy has to get past this rope barrier here. You would do that with Taguchi, but if you're not able to switch Taguchi, what do you do? Now, this is really weird, but you have to use the rope in order to switch to another character. The reason for this, um, it seems, is that the game thinks that Emmy is stuck. So when Emmy uses the rope, she's using like the rope on herself, and she's rescuing herself. <laughs> it's, it's weird, you, you'll see. I'm first going to save the game, in case I get into an encounter. You saw how when she used the rope, it like looked like it grabbed her? So yeah, when once you do that, she's rescued, I guess, and now you're able to switch characters. And look, you saw like, I don't know what this is right here, but Taguchi got glitched out right here. And that could also be another reason why you couldn't switch characters. I don't know what's going on here, but once you move to the right one step, he's back to normal. Switch back to Emmy, have her go back down here to this position. Move one more time to the right, and now you're here. I just do I do another safety save here. And reset. Now you're you can get into encounters again as well, so be careful. A quick down and up for Taguchi. Should bypass the glass right here. Now keep in mind if you move Taguchi any different than what I've done here, it's gonna move Emmy differently. So that's why it's like if you do a misstep with Taguchi, it'll throw everything off. So that's why, like, once you memorize these steps, you have to do them exactly or else Emmy has a chance of getting stuck. Swap the rope with the two keys. Another quick save and reset. Purposely get captured by these spirits and they'll bring you to where you need to go next. Now because Kazuo's lighter disappeared and got swapped with a log, we have to go get the spare matches for the end of the game. Now if there's a way to, to somehow get maybe better RNG or whatever it is to have Kazuo keep his lighter, this whole step can be removed and save a lot of time. I just don't know how to do that yet. Now you'll see that Taguchi's items, he has the vacuum, and this is some weird glitched item that's not supposed to be in the game, so you want to get rid of that. So temporarily swap this glitched item with the two keys. And then swap the glitched item with the spare matches. Swap the matches for the two key. Do a quick save and reset. Good thing I did that because an encounter just happened right here.
Sometimes controlling Emmy is still pretty tricky. She just moves so fast. <laughs> Drop off that second blue candle. Now here we're going to temporarily swap the two keys and give Emmy the vacuum and the matches. and also move up one space so we can bypass the guard. And that's another specific movement you have to do to bypass the, um, the shadow barrier. Quick save and then let's use the vacuum here. Now you could probably use Taguchi to bypass the glass, but it's it's gonna be faster in the long run to do it this way. And also the way that I have it set up is like Taguchi's in the perfect position for the remaining steps that he needs to take. And I kinda don't want to mess that up. Team back up with Akiko. You want to swap this useless log with the matches. Exit the team and Emmy will be on her way through the fireplace. Move to Gucci left one time. Get rid of that useless camera and get the strongest weapon in the game, Pitchfork. Now you just saw that the camera, the camera doesn't really have a sprite, so it shows as, as, a, uh, as a sword, but it's really a camera. <laughs> Swap the vacuum with the mallet. Swap the log with the coffin. Now here, you gotta be real careful right here. This side of the wall shows that it's already open. Because of the glitch we did earlier with the bats, it opened up certain doors. So on this side of the wall, it shows that it's open. But on the other side of the wall, it's still closed. So there's been times when I got to this point and I actually got stuck on the other side of the wall. You just gotta hope that you don't get stuck. It's a luck thing. Luckily, I didn't get stuck right here because it's happened quite a few times. So from here, you don't have to team back up, but you could either swap the coffin with this the camera or you could just put the coffin in her empty inventory slot.
Another quick safety save. Good thing, because here's another encounter. Coming up to the final areas. Now here, it's real specific. I moved Taguchi over four. Now this is to set him up for the next part. So I had to move him over to the left four times to set it up properly. And yeah, you want to give Emmy back her two keys. It would it would have been quicker just to swap the mallet with the two keys, but yeah, I guess I, I could have been faster with that. We don't need the keys anymore, so let's swap that with the picture. And grab that candle. Now I position Emmy right here. Move to Gucci those exact steps. We need the mallet, so we want to swap the mallet with the blue candle. Or the picture, whichever one. That'll bring Emmy up here by moving those steps with Taguchi. I position Emmy right here. I move Taguchi up five. I accidentally switched to Asuka. Get into an encounter with the mirror. Move up one just to bypass that statue. Quickly, quickly go back in. Bam, grab the amulet. You can swap it with the mallet because we don't need it. I said earlier that when Taguchi walks through a door, he's going to bring Emmy with her if he does that. So that's actually important to do here, as you'll see. Look, there's Emmy. <laughs> So now Taguchi's in the perfect position for the end of the game. You want to leave him here. And we're going to switch back to Emmy. Do another quick safety save. team back up with Akiko. It's a good thing I saved right here because you'll see in a second what happens. Right here, Akiko went off grid. And if you open a menu when one of the characters is off grid following Emmy, the game will soft lock. So it's, I'm so glad that I had uh, saved right when I did. Even though I lost about eight seconds. Not, not too bad, not too much of a time loss. So we can get rid of that useless camera, swap it for the tonic. So let's use the tonic, heal everybody up. Swap the blue candle with the diary. So now Kazuo has the blue candle and the matches. Give the amulet to Akiko so she has the coffin and the amulet. It's kind of important that you set it up like this for the Lady Mamiya battle. 
give Emmy the picture. So Emmy should have picture and diary. Akiko should have coffin and amulet. Kazuo should have the blue candle and the spare matches. Now you're set up for the rest of the end of the game. Place the third blue candle, use the, the spare matches and prey points, and we're all set. Now, sometimes before I go into the final area, I recommend getting into another encounter. Because right now, I don't know how many steps I had left until the next encounter. So if it's a low number, it's possible that Taguchi might get into an encounter. And it's possible that she could get stuck and you're going to have to reset. I got lucky here. I didn't get into an encounter. And luckily, I had enough steps. Like, yeah, like right here. If you get into an encounter before Taguchi um, reaches this exact spot, if Emmy, Emmy might be gone, man. Emmy's stuck. <laughs> and then you gotta reset. Those exact steps will lead her right to the Lady Mamiya battle right here. Now, this is the dialogue you want to see to use the amulet. Now, this is also RNG. I got lucky that I got this dialogue first try. So, Emmy uses the picture. Akiko uses the amulet. I just attack regular with Kazuo. see this just pray you might not need to pray with all three characters I forget the amount of pray points needed for it to switch to Lady Mamiya's second phase but just for safety at this point I was like I knew I was gonna get a PB so I was like you know I'll just play it safe and just have everybody use pray points Just keep attacking until you see the screen flash. Once that happens, then it's time to use the diary. This dialogue is to use the prey points. Once you see this second flash here, that's how you know it's time to use the coffin. And then this dialogue here, this is the last prey that you have to do. And from here, once you do this, the game is done. Bam. There you go. Um, I don't know why Asuka disappears from this end sequence, but Asuka's still alive and you still get the good ending. 
so I'm not really sure why, but yeah. <laughs> Once you do the board glitch, uh, yeah, it's um, game is very glitchy. But yeah, that's how that's how I did the speed run. I'm sure it can be faster. You just have to get really good RNG and can't get into any status ailments and be really fast with the menus, move Emmy around perfectly. Yeah, so. I think sub 8, 1835 is possible for sure because my, my current theory task is 13 minutes 11 seconds so there's still about 5 minutes to save. I don't think a 13 minute is possible RTA but hey if you're, fa if you're fast enough maybe maybe another minute could be shaved off possibly? I don't know. Or until another weird glitch is discovered by somebody. Maybe there's a glitch that, that you could do to have all the important items needed for Lady Mamiya. <laughs> you know, I'm sure that it's, I'm sure it's possible. I just don't know how to do it. Until that happens, uh, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty much it for now. If anybody has any questions, uh, leave them in the comments. I'll try to answer them as best as I can or as much as I know. There's a lot of stuff I don't really know, like, technically, but I just, I just do it and uh, hope it works. <laughs>